This recording will demonstrate prepayment functionality for vendors. I'll show end-to-end -end how to manage the procure to pay process when the vendor requires us to pay up front before the delivery of goods and services. The problem that we are addressing with this feature is the lack of an audit trail behind that prepayment activity. I will show you how we've ensured that there will be a complete audit trail backing the prepayment process in Dynamics AX 2012. So let's take a look at the prepayment process with an example. It begins with the creation of a purchase order that contains a defined prepayment. In our example that I'll walk through today, I'm going to create a purchase order with vendor 3100. I would like 3100 to provide 1000 office chairs for me at a cost of 175 US dollars per chair. This particular vendor has a problem with cash flow, so they require a prepayment of 10% before they start processing my order. So let's take a look at what this will look like in Dynamics AX. There are a few setup steps that will need to be performed before we start the payment process. I'm going to go to the Procurement and Sourcing menu option. And we're going to map a prepayment to a procurement category. Now a procurement category makes it possible to order something without having an inventory product or item in Dynamics AX. So we'll go into the Setup area under the Categories node and select Prepayment Categories, Procurement Categories, excuse me. We'll go ahead and edit the category hierarchy and we want to create a new node here. So let's go ahead and select New Category Node and I'm simply going to call this Prepayment I'll fill out a description of prepayment and that's all that we really need to do at this point. We'll go ahead and close that. Prepayment processing often requires some unique accounting. For instance, typically a prepayment will debit a prepayment expense account and oftentimes it will credit an accounts payable account that is dedicated to two prepayment transactions. Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012 can accommodate this need through the use of posting profiles. But first, let's set up the debit for the prepayment transaction. And to do that, we're going to go into the inventory area of the product. So I'll select Inventory and Warehouse Management. In the Setup area, we're going to open up the Posting node and select Posting from the menu. And select the Purchase Order tab. Next, we'll select the Prepayment Radio button, and I'm going to add an account specifically for my categories. The category that I just had created a few minutes ago was called Prepayment, so we'll go ahead and select that from the lookup as a new category. And we're going to dedicate a prepayment expense account to it. The account is 13 one one zero zero and it's a prepaid expense account. I'll just go ahead and delete this line that I created accidentally and we'll select to remove that one. So now we have the debit side of my prepayment defined. We'll go ahead and close this and the next step is to define the accounts payable account that will be credited when I process my prepayment invoice. We'll go back into the accounts payable module into the setup area and I'll select the accounts payable parameters form. Now on this form we're going to select ledger and sales tax. You'll notice that we've added a posting profile with prepayment to this form. I'm going to go ahead and select the PRE option here. It's one that's already been set up in the system. We'll go view the details of this and I'll show you that under the setup area, we've defined a special summary account of 211200 to be used for this posting profile. I'll go ahead and save that information. And let's review the setup steps that we've done so far. We've mapped the prepayment to a category. We've also defined both the debit and credit values for our prepayment invoice so that it debits a prepayment expense and it credits that unique accounts payable account that we just saw. 
So now let's go create that purchase order. I'm going to go to the purchase order list page under the common area. I'll select all purchase orders and then we'll go ahead and create a new purchase order. If you recall from our overview, we're going to order 1,000 office chairs from vendor 3,100. So we'll go ahead and select that vendor and transfer its information. Click OK and then in the line section we'll go ahead and enter in our office chair for the quantity of 1,000. Now it's time to take a look at the prepayment and define that information. So let's select the purchase tab, prepayment, and I'm going to type in a prepayment description. If you recall from the example, this, this particular vendor is requiring a 10% prepayment amount and we'll type in our category that we set up previously, the prepayment, and again this is used so that it can find that prepayment expense account for us. So we'll go ahead and save this information. Notice that the prepayment amount is for 17,500 US dollars. That's 10 percent of my total purchase order value. Let's go ahead and confirm this purchase order. The next step in the process is that the vendor would issue an invoice requesting payment for the prepayment value of 10 percent. So let's assume that we've received that invoice and we re need to record it now. To do so, I will select the prepayment invoice action and this will open up the vendor invoice form. And on this form, notice that the system has pre-populated my prepayment amount of $17,500, which is 10% of that total purchase order. The system does allow partial invoicing of prepayments if you need to do that. For this particular example, I'll leave it to default the full amount. We'll provide a number and post this prepayment. Now I'd like to take a look at the voucher entries that were created when I posted this prepayment invoice. So on the purchase order, we're going to go look at the invoice journal. Click that invoice and I'm going to select the voucher button. Now notice for this prepayment invoice that the system has debited my prepayment expense account that I had set up earlier and it's credited that specialized AP account that I had set up, I had given it the posting profile labeled PRE, so it's defaulting in the 211200 account. Let's go ahead and close this. And the next step would be to pay the vendor. So we'll close all of these forms. And let's go into create a payment journal. Go ahead and create a new one and I'll select the default value. We'll go into the lines area and we'll create this for vendor 3100. And I'm going to take you into the settlements area where you can see that prepayment invoice that we just posted. And we'll go ahead and mark this for settlement. We'll click that mark button and close this. I'll go ahead and select a prepayment value. Let me just expand this out so you can see it has um, defaulted in the payment amount from the prepayment invoice. We'll go ahead and give this a method of payment and we'll choose to post this particular payment. There we go. And we'll close up these forms. Now we're going to fast forward through time and we'll assume it's a month later and the vendor has shipped us the 1,000 office chairs. So let's go ahead and record a product receipt in the system for that particular invoice or for that particular receipt, excuse me. Here's our purchase order. I'll go ahead and open this. 
and we'll select to receive it. We'll do the product receipt for the full amount of 1,000 shares. And click OK to post that. And we'll also assume that they've invoiced us for those goods. So we'll go ahead and create a standard invoice by selecting the invoice action. We'll enter an invoice number. And while we record the invoice, we'll apply the prepayment information to this final invoice. So we'll go ahead and select the Apply Prepayment button. And that prepayment invoice shows here. We'll go ahead and select that. And we'll select Apply Prepayment. And this is the step that will reduce that vendor's balance by the amount that we've already paid the vendor. So we'll go ahead and post that. And let's go and take a look at that vendor's balance. I'll close this and go to the vendor's page. And we'll restrict or filter the list page that comes up by just vendor 3100. And let's take a look at the balance. And notice that the system recognizes that we now owe the vendor 1000 157,500 US dollars, which is that value of the office shares, which was $175,000, less the amount that we previously prepaid this particular vendor. So it was 175,000 less the 17,500 that we already have paid the vendors. So to summarize what you just saw, we were able to perform the procure to pay process with a scenario where the vendor requested a prepayment in advance of the goods being delivered an invoice. You saw how we streamlined the process, ensuring that an audit trail is kept that tracks the PO, its prepayment, its invoices, and the product receipts all at the same time.